Greetings, fellow Earth Travelers. Oblix here, coming at you today from Project Ozone Light. How y'all doing today? So last time we made all this nonsense, and today we are going to be expanded upon that. And I gotta say, my devs, uh, Christmas is over. What, what's with the hat? Why can't I take it off? Uh, it needs to go. We're going into New Year's. We should be putting on our, our New Year's party hat, not our, our Santa hat. Shut up and sit down. So, let's get into this. Now, I did, off camera, upgrade our armor. We are now rocking the mechanism obsidian armor which i must say we are looking quite stylish minus the goofy santa hat yeah and our armor levels increase so that's awesome now if you will notice in our inventory we've got some stuff uh but let's take care of a little bit of housekeeping before we get uh, off into that I did add another uh, warehouse as we finally drifted into this warehouse, filled this one up, and started drifting into this one. So I always like to keep an extra buffer in there. Uh, now, if you remember before, we were having a redstone shortage, and now we're not. And let me show you how I did that, because it's pretty cool. Uh, we're going back to our glorious cows. And there was a cow called De that had uh, destabilized redstone. And for those that don't know, you can pipe that out into a drum, which we're doing on our fluid side of our cow farm. Uh, feel free to go check out that episode where we built our, I think it's called Moo Juice, uh, where we built that. And so what I'm doing is I'm just taking an empty drum in there, popping it, you know, taking the destabilized redstone, the full destabilized redstone drum off, popping the empty one on and bringing the full one back with us. I popped that on our tinker smeltery, just like so, with a fluid conduit pushing into uh, one of these drains. Set some timers into some basins, and look at that. The destabilized redstone is pumping out into these basins and becoming redstone blocks. Yeah, boy. Look at that. Look at that goodness. Redstone shortage. No more. Look. Over a thousand redstone blocks. Just ready to go. It's fantastic. So, now that we're no longer worried about redstone, we can get into the good stuff. So, I want to... Well, I did move our one of our pure daisies, the one that was here. I moved it back over here because I want to set our... Uh, runic altar right here. We are going to need a runic altar. Now, the reason we wanted all this mana was we need to make some uh, mana items. So we're going to start with just a little bit of iron. And I've already made a bunch of this, so I'm not going to make a ton of it now. Um, but I do want to show you. We'll just do eight of each. We need some ender pearls, and we need some either redstone or gunpowder. Doesn't really matter which. They both do the same thing. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some gunpowder in this one, and see it comes back as mana powder. I'm going to drop the iron ingots into this one. And it comes back as mana steel. And I'm going to drop the ender pearls into this one. It comes back as mana pearls. So that's how you make those items. I said I've already made a bunch of them. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, we're good to go. Plus we were already getting a bunch of these from loot bags and whatnot. Uh, now let's get on with making our runic altar. And there it is. And that's just some living rock 
with a mana pearl or a mana diamond. I haven't made any mana diamonds because we do not yet, as yet, have a way to auto produce diamonds. Uh, we want one, we just don't have one yet. We will. That's coming. So I'm going to set this guy, I think, right here. I am going to turn on our magnet, which is going to suck our coal up, but that's all right. Uh, because I don't want anything dropping into the void. And we are going to put a mechanical user there. And our runic altar here. Like so. And in this bottom mechanical user, I want to put a wand of the forest. Now I made a second wand of the forest. This isn't my, you know, the one I'm car that I carry with me. Uh, this is a second one. And we want to use item on block, upper left slot only. And win redstone. Because we are going to work this off a of redstone. Now, for those that don't know, the runic altar does feed out a comparator signal. We can use that to backfeed back into that mechanical user to bap this guy. Now what happens is you put the items that are required to make the rune on this altar then you feed it some mana when it's done you have to hit this altar with a wand of the forest so that mechanical user is going to do that hitting for us based on the signal of that comparator right there. Now I'm going to use a second mechanical user to feed this guy. Like so. Actually, let's move this to the other side, I think. And I'm kind of winging this, so it may change a little bit as we go. Figure out this doesn't work or that doesn't work. Uh, so we're going to just pipe that into a block. And... I think we want a, what do we want here? I want a chest to feed items in. I did make some of this impulse item duct. I can show you that in a little bit. Uh, and because we have a Signalum cow, uh, making these Signalum servos was super easy. Normally those are, are fairly late game servos. So we're just going to set this to ignored. And basically we don't want to, we, we want to get everything, so just get it all. Uh, anything we put in there, send it down to here, pop it on there. You know that's there's one item we can't pop onto here in that manner. So we're gonna need to make this is that part I was telling you where we're kind of building this on the fly, so bear with me. Uh oh, that wasn't what I wanted. We need some more living wood planks. There we go. Open crate. Now, I think we will go straight across the top there. I don't want that connection. Do we go up one more, or do I wrench that off? Let's see. Well, actually, can I open this chest? Because that is critical. Yes. Okay. So let's see about a uh, thermal expansion. Oh, it's not a wrench in here. What is it? It's a... Uh, what is it? the iron hammer is it 
Maybe it is. No, it's this guy, Crescent Hammer. That looks nothing like a hammer. Because, yeah, reasons. There we go. We can take that away. Shouldn't need that anymore. Awesome. Now, I do want to put a filter on that guy. It says blacklist. And we're going to blacklist. the living rock because that's the one item you can't click into the system there it's got to drop in from the top so we're going to drop it with that open crate right there and then I need another filter up here and actually I need to get that living rock back and this filter is going to be a whitelist for living rock. So we blacklist down here that says no living rock can enter. We whitelist up here that says only living rock can enter. That way anything we put in this chest will go down here except living rock, which will go up here. So easy to test. Pop the living rock in. It comes out there. Good to go. Now, we need a gold chest right there with an item collector on it and we're going to put a filter on the item collector that says blacklist living rock because we don't want it to pick up living rock we want it to pick up everything else but not living rock oh and you know what else we should we should blacklist coal because He's close enough that he may grab coal. Though we can lower the range significantly. And that should help. But let's go ahead and put coal on there anyway, just to be safe. We'll blacklist coal also. Boom, boom. There we go. Now, we need to get this signal back into this mechanical user under here. How are we going to do that? Let me actually pop this off real quick. So this will be hot. I think what we'll do, I think we're going to use redstone conduit. I think because what we're going to do, and we're going to put it need it to go below crappers I'm gonna have to go into a water stream man we're gonna have to get flight here soon this uh, water stream stuff is sucking okay do we have a bucket of water 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 everywhere no we don't the crap man should always have a bucket of water. Let's go get one. What's up, Ender dude? Oh no! We broke things. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Luckily, there wasn't that much weirdness fixed. And that axe is serious, isn't it? The thing does not play. Like, oh, you want me to break this and everything else around it? No problem. Let's water stream it there. Because that'll spread out to the whole of the entire hole. Actually, let's not do... I don't know where I want to put this. Maybe there. No, let's try here. Oh, don't die with all our good stuff on us. Don't die with all our good stuff on us. Don't die with all our good stuff on us. Leap into the hole. And leap out of the hole. Oh, yeah. Close that down. Get this in. And there we go. Now 
Now, the bad news. Well, let's try it without it. I was thinking I might have to set that to strong signal. But let's try it without it, because I really don't want to go in the water stream again. And boop. And boop. And we are going to need our Yetta wrench. Yeah. How did I make two of these? I don't remember making two of those. Boom, connect them up. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, redstone conduit will attach to machines, but not to blocks natively. You can use the Yetta wrench to make that happen. So we're going to say strong signal there. So when this guy gets a signal, it'll light up that block. That block will light up the cable. The cable will pipe it over to our mechanical user here. Right there, which is set to BAP on redstone. So, we're just loading up with coal because we have our magnet on. We should be able to turn our magnet off now. Have some coal. Have to. So I think we might just be good to go. Uh, let's give this a try and yeah, we'll make any changes we need to make, but I think we're good. Uh, at least the way my brain says we... Uh, at least the way my brain thinks anyway. Uh, let's see, rune. Let's make a simple one. Rune of water. So we need mana powder, mana ingot, bone meal, sugar cane, and a fishing rod. Let's go ahead and make that fishing rod. Boom. And we need mana powder and mana steel and bone meal. So mana steel, mana powder. Let's see, why aren't those going in? Uh, let's see, bone meal. What bone meal has to do with water? I don't know. And sugar cane. And then we need one. You always need at least one uh, living rock. You always only need one, but you have to have one. It's not in the recipe, you'll notice here. But you see how this rune kind of looks like living rock? So it takes all this, combines it together to make the water rune, but it'll actually stamp the rune on the living rock. So you got to have the living rock included. Now with our magnet off, we should be able to open that chest, dump everything in there. And we need to set this to... You set them on block? Nope. Activate item with block. Ah, there we go. Nice. Exactly what we wanted. Now, see, no, we just now got a signal. Ooh, we want this guy to activate on no signal. Let's try that. And I'm going to have to make a mana spreader to shoot some mana over to this guy. I need one lousy pedal. Seriously, one. Thank you. I know I have a red. There we go. And let's go there. Let's see if it can hit that from there. I don't know if it can or not. Uh, wand. Grab our wand. Man, I have two wands. I wonder if items are duplicating. All right, folks. Sorry about that. The dog was starting to bark. Had the postman at the door receiving some packages. 
So, back to this. Uh, it did create our water runes and collected them in here, but I do want to show you. I have set up to do some fire runes. We're going to do three fire runes, so it takes uh, a mana powder, mana steel, nether brick, nether wart, and a gunpowder, so I've got set up for three. Now, you do have to do these in this method. You have to do these one at a time. So pop them in, let them flow. And notice when I mouse it over the runic altar how it's got the little green dial filling up above the rune of fire. So once that is full, now you do have to be feeding it mana from a spreader for that to work. Once it's full, it'll start getting sparks on it and it should bap it with that wand of the forest. And we just wait for it to hit it. And that's not happening. Wah, wah, wah. Why didn't that happen? We are getting signal. Let's try that. There we go. And we got two of our rune of fire. So drop another batch in. Let it cook. And you could do this, of course, all by hand. You could hand, you know, click each item into the runic altar. And then it would start the process. But it's just easier to dump it in a chest and call it done. Uh, what this also lets you do down the road, once you get your either AE system or RS system, uh, whichever your pack has, you can pop a crafting device for whichever I, you know, whichever one it is. You can pop it onto that chest and feed the items directly into there. Uh, so you can basically auto craft your runes uh, through that this method by just popping it, like I said, on this chest right here. Just remember, do one at a time. Don't queue up, you know, 50 runes of fire and then walk away, because it will uh, break, because it'll load, basically, fill this chest with all the items needed to make 50 of them. And that's obviously not gonna work. Shut up, Enderman. Nobody, nobody likes you, go away. Over here, so he'll be quiet. Sweet, six runes of fire, and you can do that with every one. You know, this will work with every one of these runes. So what I'd like to do is just go through and make a bunch. You know, four or five of each one of them. Um, you know, what I'll do is just how I had it set up here, where I'll lay it out here, and I usually do this row too. So I'll do at least four of each one. Uh, you know, and just pump them all into here. Now, one thing I'll show you on these higher tier runes. I can find one that will work. Uh, dang it, Bobby! I was looking for one that took fire and water. See how they require runes as well as items? So, with this, you actually get the rune back. So this requires a rune of winter and a rune of fire. You won't get the diamonds back, but you will get the, like, the rune of fire back. So, uh, and this collector will collect it and put it back in this chest for you. So, and then if you're, you know, doing it with an RS system or an AE system, you just put your importer on that chest right there. So when it sucks it up, you can run it back in. You could also do this uh, if you don't have these, if you don't have random things in your pack, this, these item collectors, you could do it with things like... Uh, uh, say a vacuum chest from Ender IO, you know, you could do it with that as well. You know, just put it, you know, here, here, and then you can set it to redstone mode so that, you know, at the same time you're bapping this guy, like one tick later you bap your uh, vacuum 
chest and it will suck the stuff up just at that time so you don't grab your uh, piece of what is it the block of li uh, living rock that has to sit on top uh, so that would work as well but either way that is our runic altar setup semi-automated uh, be automated further down the line so Maruski was just in our base up to no good obviously we'll have to check that out here in a little bit I want to move on to the terrestrial agglomeration plate that's a mouthful isn't it so let's go on and look that up this little guy right there is unassuming plate oh look at all this takes all these runes hence why we have the runic altar so in addition to this you need three blocks of lapis uh, but you also need an additional four blocks of lapis laid out on the ground and five living rock laid out on the ground so i'm going to go ahead and make our runes up and get our lapis together and I will bring you back. We'll look at laying this bad boy down. I'm starting to expand yet again our platform. We'll put it down over here somewhere. And we do want to be able to be close to these mana pools. So uh, I'll take care of that and get back with you here in just a little bit. Check it out, guys. One of the rarest creatures in Minecraft to naturally spawn a pink sheep. Well, we will definitely keep this guy. <laughs> We'll suck him up in our sucker upper of mobby thing. Why has it only got Huh? I thought I had more mobs in there than that. I guess not. I might have dropped him off at the nether for the cows. But yeah, pink sheep, how cool. Those are very rare uh, to naturally spawn anyway. Obviously, you can dye them, but just figured I'd show you because I don't know that I've run into too many of those. Uh, definitely not here. Oh, no, we dropped our dirt. Bye, dirt. Bye forever, dirt. Uh, definitely not up here in the sky, but they're rare, you know, anywhere. So, too cool. All right, back to making runes. I just had to come over here and murdify the wildlife. Because, you know, that's a thing I do. So that we can get more cows. Alright, I'll bring you back in a little bit. Alright, so I'm trying to make this... All the runes for our agglomeration plate. And I'm doing the rune of earth. And I don't have any brown mushrooms. I have red ones, but no brown ones. Ugh. So I'm here in the nether looking. Oh, look what I see! How do I get down there? I think I've already dug me a path, maybe? Yeah, I have. And, and, sweet! Gimme, 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 gimme. Let's turn on my magnet. I don't wanna miss any of this deliciousness. Alright, well our last rune crafts up there. Let's go see what shenanigans ruski has been up to over here. So, let's see. Packed in snow. Looks like we have some grass on top. With a pink tulip. Very fitting. And a sign to Oblix. I'm almost afraid to open it. Let's see what she's done. I'm guessing that's our snow. Remember we left a, uh, a Santa cow uh, in her base just making all manner of snow. <laughs> so that's a thing. We got a chest. Let's see. Actually, tulips are cool. We don't get those uh, in either of our biomes. Remember, we got desert over there and savanna over there, and neither one of those spawn uh, tulips when you bone mill, so that's cool. Let's see. It's not a trap chest, so we should be safe to open it. Bones. 
name tags, safari nets. Oh, look at that, wolves. How awesome is that? And let's see what she said. Congratulations, dear friend. I'm ecstatic you got recognized by YouTube in one of the videos promoted. That is a great honor, and I'm proud to know you in the video. They select it is without a doubt a huge contribution to the Minecrafters looking to upgrade their or duplication machines. This is just the beginning of your videos. Don't forget uh, me. Oh, well, of course not. That's awesome. Thank okay. you. Yeah, for those that don't know, um, I don't know why or how. I, I do not understand the mechanics of it. Uh, YouTube picked one of my videos to promote, uh, and it was my mechanism uh, five times or duplication, you know, showing how to do that. Uh, I spent a lot of time on that, and I was, I was pleased to see it. It had a, you know, about 100 views or so, uh, and then all of a sudden in one day it went up to like 800 views, so... Um, you know, definitely YouTube promotion helps uh, when they see you and they promote you. Uh, like I said, I don't know the mechanics of how and why they do it. It would be nice to know. I think that would be super cool. Um, but that is awesome. I, wolves are super cool. I want dogs. I love dogs. I have a dog in real life right behind me right now. So I, I want to throw this down, but I don't want it running off the edge. We need to set up a space. We'll maybe take it over there and do it. Uh, see if we can get it. The only thing is they do sit there and bark uh, for a long time, but we will absolutely be doing this very soon. But for now, I think these are done. Boom! Six of every rune. How about that? And that gave us a quest. Awesome. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, you know, when you've got your, your lines here of your different runes, you toss one in. Once it starts shooting the mana over, you can go ahead and toss a second one in. It'll just queue up here in the uh, mechanical user. Don't toss a third in uh, until the first one's finished, but uh, you can backlog one and then run, go run around and do other things, right? So we need our agglomeration plate. We should have... Ah, we don't have the blocks. There we go. We'll make blocks. We have plenty of mana steel. So now there's our agglomeration plate. And I did already lay out the pattern. Like I told you, you need four of the lapis and five of the living rock. And I laid the pattern out already. Pop that guy right there in the middle. Bingo, bango, bongo. Now we need sparks. Because that is what is going to transfer the mana. This guy does not use... Oh no, we need petals. I need to get petals. This guy does not use uh, spreaders to transfer the mana. You know, we're used to transferring the mana, which remember is just Batania's form of power. We transfer it, you know, using the spreaders into whatever machine needs it, just like we would use a conduit in Ender.io uh, or a leadstone flux duct in Thermal Dynamics. Uh, a spark is another method of power transmission. And it's a faster method of power transmission. So you know, in um, say for example, Ender IO, you have multiple tiers. You know, this is a mid-tier power transmission cable. This uh, enhanced energy conduit. There's a, a lower tier and a higher tier. Well, in similar fashion, uh, Batania has three different tiers of spreaders. And then for super fast transmission, there's a device called a spark. I bet you have to be relatively close, and you put a spark on the receiver and a spark on the sender, and it'll just zoop, uh, transfer mana over super fast when you need huge amounts of mana. But it does have to be relatively close in distance. So let me grab a, some shears and some bone meal and get to smacking on these plants again and get some uh, petals so we can get some sparks made. All right, petals acquired, ready to make our sparks. Got two of them there. So we're going to pop one down on the receiver and it just kind of floats there in the air and looks kind of cool. We're going to pop one down on one of these mana pools because that's our battery and that basically built a connection. If we use our wand of the forest we can see that connection. So if I just take that and whack one of those sparks you can see that it's close enough. You can whack either one 
you can see that it's close enough for it to build the connection. So, uh, and it can go a little ways, but not too, too, too far. Uh, now we need to make some Terra steel. So to make Terra steel, there it is right there. I can't remember what you throw on the plate. You know what? We're just going to wing it. I'm not getting out the book. I think it's one of those. I think it's... Oh, I think it's a diamond instead of... I can't remember if it's a pearl, a powder, or a diamond. We are going to need some diamonds. Because I do... I'm, I'm pretty sure one of them was diamonds. So let's make some uh, mana diamonds real quick. Turn our magnet off. Drop those in. And there we go, mana diamonds. Nice. And we'll know pretty much right away uh, which it is because it'll either start making craziness or it won't. Uh, which do you have to get them actually on the plate? Dang it, Bobby! On, on, on. On, on, on. Stop picking stuff back up. There it is. So it is the diamond. And you get this cool effect. You see it transferring the mana across. You see that pool just draining. And it'll take about half a tank. You see the lights turning green. They go down into it. And they're fully green now. Boom, Terra Steel. Dun dun dun, we've achieved it. And you notice we've drained about half a tank of mana to do so. Now we're instantly going to turn these into nuggies. Because that's what we're going to need to make the next device. We can drop all that in there. Now we need to make an elven gateway. And that is just living wood and terra steel nuggies. Boom. Done. We need to make some three glimmering living wood. And of course I should have hit the little box and I didn't. And we need living wood. Nice. And we're going to build it back over here. Because... Uh, why wouldn't you? Uh, yeah. Yep, yep. Maybe... Here. So... Bam. Right in the middle. Two out. Two out. One up. Glimmering. One up. One up. Glimmering, one up. Glimmering, and boom. Done. Now we need two mana pools. And that is not how you get a mana pool, Oblix. What the heck are you thinking? These can go anywhere within about three blocks. Uh, they can go in front, behind, up, down, da, 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 wherever. I'm just sticking them off the side, get them out of the way. Uh, and we're going to need some pylons. And I'm pretty sure it's the nature of pylons, which require mana pylons. So let's pop those in. We should have just enough nuggets to do it. They were kind enough to grant us the appropriate amount with one Terra Steel ingot. Boom. Pop 
pop those into the mana pools like so. Now we need to get mana into those pools. So for that, we're going to use mana tablets. No. See, I thought that had looked like it duplicated, and apparently it did. So we're going to toss this guy into there. Now pull out our wand of the forest and set it to fill the tablet mode. There we go. Shift click, Oblix. Come on. See it draining. And let me get some mana in this tablet, get it moved over here. I'm not going to make y'all sit around and wait for this. Once I get the mana. Uh, sufficiently full in those two pools, I'll bring you back. Alright, got our pylons and pools set up. Got a half tank of mana in each one of them. And we're going to go ahead and bop this thing. So I did move them around to the back back here, kind of extended the platform just a little bit more. I didn't much care for them being on the side like that. But they would work. They would have worked over there, words English good. Bop that thing. And we get our elven portal. Now, this does drain mana to open the portal, but it does not drain mana to keep the portal open. It can just kind of sit there. So, you see the mana's not going down? Once it's there, you're good to go. First thing you want to do is take this here, Lexica Botania, which has all the bits and bobs about the first half of the mod, and you want to throw it in the portal. And it's going to spit one back at you. It is the new Lexica Batania. Notice the front page is different. Dun dun dun. You've made contact with the elves. Greetings. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Yada yada. So that's that. Now you get extra stuff. Uh, stuff you didn't have access to before, like the Ritual of Gaia, Ritual of Gaia 2, Relics. Uh, the resources of Alfheim. And basically what that is, is you throw junk in the portal, the elves throw junk back at you. How about that? Uh, so, let me show you. I've got, I just so happen to have some junk. If we throw a mana pearl in, we get pixie dust. If we throw a mana diamond in, we get Dragonstone. If we throw two mana steel, we get one elementium. And let's see. Let's do some glass and some living wood. We're going to need to make some more living wood. If I throw living wood in, Nice, we get Dreamwood. Now, I'm not going to throw that glass in there because that'd be stupid. They all just don't want glass, but they do want you sucked up my glass. Fine, I'll do it over here. Mana glass. So if I throw this in there. I can do it from either side, I believe. Throw that mana glass in. And we get elf glass, which is actually really pretty. Makes real neat pathways and stuff, I think, anyway. Uh, and you can break it with a pickaxe. It does not have silk touch. Uh, which is why, actually, I put silk touch on my shovel, by the way, if anybody's asking. Uh, is so I can break glass with it. But, there you go. We have moved on to an, the advanced tier of Batania. We can now build anything our little hearts can imagine. Little minds can imagine. Anything we can dream up within the world of Batania. We have access to all the available resources with the exception of Gaia Spirits. Uh, but we can now go fight the Gaia 
and get those spirits. So we're we're on the top tier of Batania as we stand right now. So awesome. But I think that is going to do it for today. Turn around. Look at me. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Of course, I'm talking to myself about that. But I do want to thank Maruski for her very kind gift. We will. We will. We will play with those wolves here soon. I did think about it. I almost did it in this episode and said, no, I'm not going to do it. This episode's already getting long. And this platform is just not safe. I mean, look, we have a, a wide open edge here and... I like to fight Endermen, and dogs will die, and that will make me sad. So we're going to wait until we have our permanent base where we can put them in relative safety. But until next time, folks, get out there and make some noise. See ya! Look at this goober. He, he's trying to go to the elves. I, I, I don't know why, but he thought he'd go over there. Uh, anyway. Look, there they go again. Why did they like going to the elves? I, I don't get it. He just, I don't know, he thinks it's a thing. <laughs>